Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Should you buy the iPhone 14? Is it time to toss your now one-year-old iPhone 13 to the wayside and throw money at Apple just to get the latest and greatest iPhone? Is it really worth it? Or should you just wait for the iPhone 15? What's actually gonna change this year? Apple has some big iPhone secrets they don't want you to know, but sorry, Tim, the iPhone master plan has leaked and the iPhone 14 is gonna be a really boring upgrade unless you know the secrets. So as we always do here on the Apple Circle, let's break down the latest Apple leaks, news, and rumors that you need to know about, including the top five or so reasons why you should buy the iPhone 14, why you should totally skip it, why you might just wanna wait for the iPhone 15. Let me tell you why the iPhone 14 is worth it, and also why it's not worth it, because trust me, you do not wanna make a mistake this year. Let me just be honest, the iPhone 14 is gonna be really, really weird this year. Not because it's gonna look like this, that'd be exciting, but really the opposite. The iPhone 14, by all accounts, is shaping up to be pretty boring unless you go with the Pro model. Apple is doing things really differently this year, and while the Pros look pretty good, the regular iPhone 14 looks ultra disappointing. And instead of doing what they normally do, which is make all the flagship iPhones great and save a couple of little goodies for the Pro and iPhones, this year Apple is clearly separating the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Max from the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. These higher end phones are gonna have way more features, which sort of begs the question, why would you even buy the iPhone 14 this year? What's actually gonna be new? And as a real quick refresher, these are sort of the highlights of the iPhone 14 lineup. These are the big features coming this year. It's gonna be the smaller notch. It might be the rumored satellite connectivity feature, maybe some new colors, better battery life, always on display, a main camera upgrade to 48 megapixels, and an upgraded selfie camera as well, and a new processor, but the majority of those features, like I mentioned, are just reserved for the Pro phones with the regular 14 and 14 Max just getting a small handful of new features this year that honestly might not even make the 14 phones worth the upgrade. Now, if you followed those early iPhone 14 rumors and you were really waiting for some major iPhone redesign, let me just break it to you now, that's not happening this year. By all accounts and by all the latest leaks and rumors that have come out since those initial rumor flurries, uh, it looks like uh, the iPhone 14 design is not gonna change this year. We're not gonna get that iPhone 4 style redesign with the iPhone 14 looking super similar to the iPhone 13. In fact, here's a side-by-side -side of the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro. Can you even tell which one is which? Yeah, not a whole lot is changing in terms of design this year. With that said though, I know it is super early, I know, I know, but we have started to hear discussions and rumblings about the iPhone 15, and there has been some speculation that maybe the iPhone 15 is the phone that gets more of a major redesign. Maybe that is the iPhone 4 style redesign we have all been hoping for and waiting for. That might happen next year in 2023, though again, everything is still up for debate because it's a little too soon to know just yet, but there is some sort of speculation that that redesign happens next year. But in terms of this year's design, it's gonna remain largely unchanged. Obviously, we are going to see the smaller notch system on the 14 Pro and Pro Max. So those phones at least will look a little bit different on the front, though Face ID is still gonna work exactly the same, at least as of what we know right now. So if you want a phone that looks different, um, not gonna really get that this year unless you go with the pros, but as soon as you flip it onto the back, you're gonna see these phones look eerily similar to the iPhone design we've seen for the last couple of years. And with things like the smaller notch, the higher end camera system, the always on display, all those things reserved for the pros, what's really the compelling reason to pick up an iPhone 14? What's actually going to be new? And of course, things might change. The iPhone 14 and 14 Max might get some software goodies, but really it's got like four or five new features you're actually going to notice. We might see some new colors. We should be seeing better battery life in the iPhone 14 series this year. We should see an upgraded selfie camera. The rumored satellite connectivity might come to every iPhone 14 model, including these lower end iPhones. And also the big one here is really the new size. 
Apple is ditching the 14 mini. Despite some like last minute rumors it could come back, it's not actually gonna happen. There will not be an iPhone 14 mini, but instead there's gonna be an iPhone 14 Max. So really this year, if you've been holding out for a Pro Max, but you don't wanna spend that Pro money and you don't need those Pro features, then this actually will be a really good year for you because the iPhone 14 Max is gonna give you all the benefits of a large, beautiful 6.7 inch OLED iPhone. You could have a big display for watching movies and playing games, reading emails, browsing the web, uh, but it's not gonna have those pro features or that pro price tag. That's really gonna be the star of the show, at least with the regular 14 lineup, the non-pro phones. Which sort of begs the question, why would you buy an iPhone 14 or 14 Max should you even upgrade this year? Well, it's a little complicated to answer that because I don't know what your specific iPhone situation is or what your phone situation is, uh, but I will say if you have an iPhone 13 and you're not looking to go to a larger phone, really doesn't make a lot of sense to go from the 13 to the 14. Even the 12 to the 14 is hard to justify. In many cases, if you can find an iPhone 13 used for a really good deal or even a new one at a discount, you might be better off buying a 13 than a 14. Yeah, you're gonna miss out on maybe a better selfie camera and better battery life, but again, the 14 is gonna remain largely unchanged and the 13 might just be a better buy nine times out of 10. All right, now before we continue with more of the iPhone 13 versus 14 versus 15 madness, let's take a quick break for a second because I wanna to talk to you guys about an awesome game that is here to bring an amazing immersive experience with beautiful graphics right to your mobile phone or PC. A game that is pitting good versus evil, champions against bosses, one that has hundreds of artifacts. Of course, I'm talking about the one, the only, Raid Shadow Legends. Lately, my favorite faction has been the High Elf. Their homeland of Aravia that had been around for thousands of years got caught in a bit of a twisted battle. After surviving the fall of the Lizard Man Empire, helping humans form into civilizations, the Lord of Darkness convinced a bunch of elves to turn evil and attack the kingdom. The Civil War was just crazy, pitting elves against each other, but luckily Aravia survived, it rebuilt, and it is stronger now than it's ever been before. And as usual, there is just a ton of stuff happening right now in Raid, including some non-stop special events. Including Forge Pass Season 3, which is packing some amazing rewards. There has never been a better time to download and start playing Raid right now. Use the DK Rise's promo code for a bunch of free items, including the ability to instantly level your new strongest champion all the way to a level 50 and five star ascension. And if you are brand new to raid, definitely be sure to click that link down below in the description or scan the QR code on screen because you can get a free starter pack with nearly $30 worth of stuff inside. You'll find your rewards waiting for you right here in the inbox for the next 30 days. And again, this is only for new players. And if all that sounded super exciting and you want to jump in and start playing raid right now, you can by clicking the link down below in the description or scan the QR code on screen. You you play it on your mobile phone or PC. And honestly, I got it queued up right here. I'm gonna finish uh, this ad and then I'm gonna get back to playing. Based off the latest leaks and rumors, it seems like the iPhone 14 is going to remain unchanged in terms of price. $799 is your entry point into the iPhone 14 universe. We don't know what the iPhone 14 Max could be. Maybe it's $899 or $999. I think $100 more than the 14 would make a lot of sense, but we don't know. But the Pros, those are definitely, according to multiple analysts, going to get more expensive, with the 14 Pro jumping from $999 to $1099, and the Pro Max jumping from $1099 to $1199. Basically, every single SKU of the 14 Pro or Pro Max is going to get $100 more expensive this year. We have heard that maybe Apple will justify the $100 more in price by doubling the starting starting storage from 128 to 256, though that's just a rumor right now, could go either way, so that's what we're looking to see in the iPhone 14 Pro models this year. But with that being said, a Pro phone might be a little bit easier to justify this year based off all the features it's going to get because it's not gonna be the biggest year for the iPhone ever, but the 14 Pro and Pro Max will be getting a lot of new features this year. Of course, there's the always on display, which some people love, some people don't care all that much about, uh, but it will be cool basically giving you this always on functionality so when your phone's just sort of sitting on a table, it's in sort of this dim state and you can see info at a glance and then you pick it up or you tap the screen, then your sort of home screen or I guess your lock screen jumps to life with vibrant color. That should be super cool to see what Apple's gonna do with that. We're also gonna see that pretty big camera upgrade come to the pros only this year with the jump to a 48 megapixel main camera. Should give you better looking photos, hopefully better videos. If 
if you are really into taking photos and videos on your phone, if you've got kids, you're, you're just sort of into taking landscape or portrait shots, or you, you just really love the uh, camera on your phone, then a camera upgrade of this magnitude, assuming it's gonna live up to the hype, should be a really good deal. And maybe, just maybe, the camera upgrade alone will be enough to justify the cost difference and uh, the jump in price up from your phone right now to a 14 Pro model. So, so far, this sort of makes sense, right? The 14 and 14 Max are sort of questionable upgrades. It really depends on what phone you're coming from and how much you value that bigger screen or those new features. And the 14 Pro and Pro Max make more sense if you want the always on display, if you want the better camera system and those other Pro and features, that would be nice to see. But beyond that, let's just throw out the question based off of what we know right now. If you've got a, maybe an iPhone 13 or an iPhone 12 or an iPhone 11, or you've got an older iPhone, but you're not attempted to upgrade just yet, you might be asking yourself the question, well, what comes next? What could be coming with the iPhone 15 that would be worth waiting for? To that, I would say right now, we don't know, though we think we know a couple of big features that might be coming next year. One of the big changes slated to come next year with the 15 is a new periscope zoom lens on the Pro Series. This is where Apple is going to offer better optical zoom, a better telephoto lens. So if you are a big fan of zoom, there are rumors that we could see a 10x optical zoom lens in the 15 Pro and Pro Max next year. We've also got rumors that Apple is going to expand the double hole punch system to all phones next year. So no matter if you buy a 15 or a 15 Pro Max, you're going to have that new double hole punch system next year. There have been some rumors that Apple could remove the SIM slot next year and just go eSIM only on the iPhone 15 line. The iPhone 15 should make the switch from Lightning over to USB-C. And then obviously probably the biggest feature of all is some sort of new design. Again, a lot we don't know just yet about the iPhone 15, seeing as the iPhone 14 still isn't even out yet, but there has been some speculation and some rumber, rumber, rumblings in the rumor mill that we could see some sort of significant design change coming to the iPhone 15 next year. Apple does keep the iPhone design DNA similar for a few years as the 14 looks similar to the 13 and even the 12, uh, but hopefully next year we see something different with the iPhone 15. Again, no promises here, but there has been some speculation that maybe the iPhone 4 style redesign comes back or Apple does something else that's significant and different than what we have this year with the iPhone 14. In addition to that though, we also know that Apple is working on some other changes to the iPhone over the next few years. If you're a fan of the folding iPhone concepts, the folding flipping iPhone, Apple is still confirmed to be in the works on that phone, but it might not be ready in time for the iPhone 15 with current rumors right now suggesting a launch in the next two years. So maybe sometime at the end of 2023, more likely sometime in 2024, maybe 2025, a folding iPhone is in the works, but Apple is not gonna rush this to market. So you're gonna have to wait a little longer for that. So I'm curious guys, what are your thoughts on the iPhone 14, the iPhone 13 versus the 14 versus the 15? What are your thoughts on the iPhone line right now? There's been a lot of criticism, I think rightfully so, that the iPhone 14 we thought we were gonna have is not exactly the phone we're going to have. And in a lot of ways, these are um, some very interesting features that make a whole lot of sense for some people and not for others. I love the always on display. I'm excited for the camera upgrade, excited to see what could be new, but for some people, they don't care about this and it looks like more of a boring upgrade. And with the iPhone 14, is there really any reason besides better battery life and a better selfie camera to buy the 14 over the 13? I'm struggling to find reasons, but let me know if you've got thoughts down below. Let me know what the phone you've got right now and if you're planning to upgrade to the 14 or wait for the 15. What are your thoughts on the iPhone lineup and will you upgrade this year? Let me know down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support as always. I'm Robert Rosenfeld for the Apple Circle and I'll see you all in the next one.